Matt Hall back at the Tallgrass Tap House for like the third time already mm -hmm. uh, with you, Coach. And then this time we have DJ Johnson with us. We appreciate you coming out, man. How you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me, man. Oh, man, we're excited to do it. You know, I mean, I was thinking all day about the first question I was going to ask you. I have all these different ideas, and I'm going to start with a dumb one because I've always wanted to ask you this. So your free throw routine. Yeah. Um, what what uh, prompted that? Just explain that to me because I always loved watching that go happen, and I wondered how you came up with it. Uh, just worked on it with the coaching staff. Um, Celo used to get on me about you know my feet used to be too wide, right. and so I had to narrow out my stance a little bit and just repetitive, trying to get something that that fit for me and something that would make me have less errors right. while shooting. So just came about and had you seen somebody before go through the process of catching off a off a bounce and then going into the shot after that or no i have not i have not seen nobody do that i just so. always thought it was fascinating you know but you're a guy who went from earlier in your career to being an average shooter to by you know your senior season were, were pretty good free throw shooter and is that something that you're pretty proud of uh yeah i thought i could be a little bit better just i, I went on a streak probably and missed five or six while we were down at baylor and what I really should have made them, so that that was tough. And you know, I, I always try to do good. I, one time I was with uh, Coach Larry, I uh -huh. made 32 free throws in a row. Is that so. true? It's a true statement. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it, I'm, oh, I wish I could wish could have got into the 80s, but sure. you know, still working on it. Still work in progress. So what are you doing right now? You're still playing somewhere overseas, I imagine? Or? Yep. Yeah. This past year, I finished up playing in Greece, and uh, next year, I don't know what's going to hold. Um, We've been getting calls from Japan, Turkey, Belgium. So, you know, you just never know. And I like that aspect of it. You know, I I can't, I like routine, but at the same time, you know, I like to have a little surprise, you know, something different. And, you know, me right. coming from St. Louis, especially growing up downtown, is just like, you know, you never expect to get out and see the world the way I did. So it, it's just fun and I'm enjoying it. Coach, this is the third straight guy we've talked to who plays basketball professionally, you know, for a living. Mm -hmm. I think people sometimes forget about that it's not just the NBA. There's basketball all over the world where those guys can make a, make a living. And um, it's got to make you proud to have all these guys who played under you doing this for a living now. Right. And, you know, it's, it's good to see them back and they tell funny stories and yeah. they make fun of people. But it's, it's more important that they're around our guys right. and, and help them. And, and just teaching the younger guys to be men is important. Um, being a man doesn't mean you're tough. These guys all take care of business. They've all graduated. I don't know how many degrees DJ has <laughs> and is working on. He's always a work in progress. Sure. You know, DJ was one of the one of those guys who always took advantage of the situation, took advantage of meeting people, took advantage of um, going out and, and and never telling the kid no on a autograph, shaking every hand he could, and um, that's why he was such a popular player in person in town and in K-State history. He's right. You are one of the more popular players, you know, of, I don't know, the last 10 years or so, maybe longer in Manhattan. Um, Got to be something I imagine you take pride in and having the kids come up to you and people to this day, I'm sure, come talk about that kind of stuff. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I guess I don't really notice it. Like everything that I, I don't know, I kind of compare myself or try to try to do everything how Rod and Jail and those right. guys did things because they were seniors when I came in. I was a freshman. I didn't know anything. So everything is just, you know, me trying to keep up with them and do things the way that they did it because they did things the right way. You mentioned coming in as a freshman with those guys. You're an interesting guy where you really bridged, you know, that you know that part of the program to when the program went through a rough patch and coaches had to do, you know, the right things for the program to getting back into the tournament. Um, how tough was that process? But then, how rewarding was it to get this program all the way back, you know, where it needed to be? I mean, it, it was tough just because uh, the one year I sat on the sideline, and I'm just right. like, man, I know I can help out. You know, I want to contribute, but I was sidelined with the injury and uh, just coming back the following year, you know, we had so many victories where we're right there, we're an inch away from winning and, right. you know, getting that big win. So it, that, that part was just tough, and, you know, you just got to be patient and, you know, we, we stayed the course and did everything right. Um, the coaching staff, like I said, in those games, like they put us in a position to, to win and execute on that right. final play, you know. So that's always good. And I know with that uh, another year under our belt, I knew we could do something special and get back to the tournament like we deserved um, my senior year. So it was just – it was great, uh, great to get back. And I probably, probably even funner to see these guys right. go and make an Elite Eight run the following year after I leave is just like, man, like, that's what I like to see, you know, the program moving up again, you know. So it was fun, and um, 
the rough patch, it was tough, but we, we, we overcame everything and, you know, we we're successful at the end of the day. You mentioned the injury. I'm curious for both you guys on this. Uh, I think when a, a guy gets an injury that takes him out for a season, fans or media just think, oh, that's, you know, that's too bad. We'll get him back next year. But for you, that's a year of your life. I mean, what is it like, you know, day by day rehabbing that kind of thing and trying to get back to where you were? Um, I mean, it's tough. It it was tough initially, but uh, Luke's just a positive person. Whenever I would come in and I would feel down, you know, Luke, man, he he just has it. He has a way, has a niche for just like making sure that you're OK. Um, anything you're going through, you know, he, he's got a story for it or it, I don't know. He just he did a really good job with making me stay positive or keeping me positive and uh, getting me back on the floor and. I can't thank him enough, man. He he's just great, and he's great at what he's do at what he does. And coach, like I said, a similar question for you. Uh, you know, these guys are your family and your kids and that kind of stuff. What's it like for you to have to deal with that kind of thing and, and see them have to fight through that? I mean, it was tough with him yeah. because, you know, when it happened, like he never like showed emotion. Yeah. You know, like DJ, you all right? Look, go, go back. What are you doing? Go back yeah. in there. And he said, Coach, it's broken. I said, No, it's not. <laughs> And he was like, yes. And he just walked past right. me. And he went in the back, and they came back and said, yeah, it's broken. I was like, oh. You know, I felt horrible. <laughs> and I was just worried about Get beating there, Kentucky man. at the time. Right. I only cared about beating them. And, right. You yeah. know, when, when – and, and I could tell how he was acting once, you know, they came, that it was really bad, you know, because he was really emotional about yeah. it. And it's hard. And, I, you know, it's so funny. When TJ came back – I, we got a video of my daughter when he was rehabbing. My daughter ran sprints with DJ to kind of get mm-hmm. him back going and shot free throws with him. And she thought she was coaching him how right. to, how to shoot. And uh, <laughs> but that's yeah. that's where it's at. You know, I asked my daughter the other day. I said, "Who's who's your favorite K State player of all time?" And she just put her head down. And said, "Oof, it's a tough one, DJ and and, and Gib. I can't yeah. I can't do it." She said, "I it can't like do it." Either. I'll take I mean, that. She yeah. said, "Those two, those Gibster and DJ are my boys." So she said, "Those are." She can't pick. So I said, "You gotta pick one." She said, "No, no, I don't, Dad. Those are those That's two it. are my guys." Yeah. So, I think a big reason why so many people. You know, do look up to you in our fans' ears uh, is, is your motor, and to you, that's probably something that just comes comes naturally. But um, I, I guess what drives you to play the, the way you do with the effort you do nonstop? Um, you know, I don't know. Um, I just like to get out there and run up and down, sprint the floor, outwork everybody. I know if, if I, I work everybody, my team's got a great chance of winning. So uh, that's just my attitude. That's how I attack the game. And, uh, you know, that's just me. That's just how I play it. You know, today we played open gym, and um, one of the guys threw a lazy pass, and I came in and stole his inbounds pass, and he was just like, you can't do that. That's DJ. Like, he's going to run through it. (laughs) So they know. So it's like I'm I'm just going to play hard the whole time, and, you know, I I take pride in, you know, not letting nobody else outwork me. Coach, you said more than once on this this year about how much – fun it is to coach a team that you don't have to convince to play hard or, or make play hard is he kind of the prime example of a guy being like that yeah I mean you know he he had a you know he had a mark he left a mark from our younger guys because you know like back-to-back days Cam was like what if we had DJ this year right. <laughs> and then the next day <laughs> yeah. um Cardi was like man I never got to play with DJ man yeah. I, I would have loved to have played with him so they, he definitely did a good job being a big brother because they missed him you know, even though we had success, those guys sure. still left a mark. And, you know, Corby's back, and obviously him and Corby and Wes as seniors got us back to where we needed, needed to go. And um, it, it's just good to have them back and have them around and, and to see that they're, they're grown up. You know, they don't, yep. they don't need us anymore to call or wake them up. They don't need us to do the little stuff we used to do, you know, when they were, when they were young. You know, they've actually grown up right before our eyes. Coach talks about you guys, you know, getting that program back to the tournament before you left. And then you mentioned what they did last year. Was it hard to watch that as a fan? You know, and feel like you didn't have control like you do as a player. Um, is it more nerve wracking to watch them play when you're just a fan? Um, man, I don't know. I really can't compare it. But I think just like being able to sit back, like I, I sat back and watched as a fan and like I'm thinking in my head like, oh, we got to do this, we got to do that. Or right. he's got to make that shot or he's going to make that shot. So just sitting back and watching it and knowing that he's got the defense, he's got us playing defense as well as we can and scouted them good. I knew like we were in the right hand. So right. I don't know, it's just um, more exciting. I probably woke up a lot of people because it was <laughs> – 
four or five o'clock in the morning and I'm yeah. yelling and screaming. <laughs> I don't know if they got police in the area that I was in a small <laughs> town, but I'm up screaming and hollering at the TV for two, three hours and just excited to see them do their thing and, and make things happen. I think one thing that maybe the roster missed last year in talking to coach was a guy who would just attack the glass and play with that kind of intensity all the time. And the open gym these first, you know, last three or four days, do you see anybody on this team who can maybe fill that role? Oh, yeah, this year? yeah, without yeah. a doubt. Uh, dang, what is the kid's name? I forgot Austin. his name. Austin. <laughs> yeah. Austin, yeah. that's his name. <laughs> yep. uh, Trice, Austin Trice. Yeah, so, I mean, he crashing the boards nonstop. You know, he asked me today, he, he, he knew he can crash the boards. Right. He just was uh, concerned about maybe him uh, just being able to out jump everybody. And I told him, you know, you you might not be able to out jump everybody here because it's going to be a physical league. Right. Uh, so you just you know do what you know best. Finish at the rim. Finish strong. Everything else will work out. But he he wants to dunk everything, yep. and that's not bad. And, you know, it's good. <laughs> it's good. You're gonna have some opportunities where you're gonna be able to dunk it every single time. But right. some opportunities playing in the Big Twelve, you know, you're gonna get walled up by a strong guy so he just got he'll be able to overcome that and that'll be that i think it's fascinating to hear your guys' thoughts on players on the team so i'm curious a guy who who kind of took a lot of your minutes after you left would have been mccall mawain mm-hmm. and just your thoughts on seeing him this summer and what kind of player he is man he's great he's he just seeing him from compared to last summer to this summer he's he's more built i mean just rock solid um, runs the floor, you know, puts the ball on the ground a little bit, shoots the three. So he does a little bit of everything, and it's pretty cool seeing him. Now that he's got that year under his belt, I'm excited to see what he's going to be able to do next year. Coach has talked, you know, every one of these about how much he appreciates you guys coming back and, and working with the team. Um, but what does it mean for you personally to, you know, be asked back and then get a chance to keep helping this program grow? I mean, it's special because it's, um, it's kind of where I became a man here, you know, learning from them and – uh, seeing how they conduct themselves on and off the court from the coaching staff and them just, you know, small teachers and everything. Um, this is home. Manhattan yeah. is home. And uh, that's I think that's why a lot of guys come back. And uh, they do a good job uh, walking us with open arms and making sure we're taken care of when we do get back here. So, I mean, it's, it's a blessing to be able to be back with them and, and be in a gym and work out with the guys and, you know, just still feel like, we're still a part of this. So it's special. It's really special. I always try to get people to say something funny about Coach as he's sitting here. <laughs> Has he changed in the last, you know, five, six years? Can you remember? Can you see a difference in him from what he's like with the team now than what he was, you know, back when you got here? Nope. Exactly nope. The same. same guy. Same guy. Um, same guy. First guy to tell you you did something good. Yeah. Uh, first guy to tell you, you what you need to get better at, you know. So, I mean, and that's the difference maker right there. He, he does things to a T. I mean, just – scouting report everything on you in practice everything you know that was something that i missed when i was overseas just i i text him and told him you know i don't got nobody yelling at me (laughs) dj run the floor uh seal them you know don't do this don't you don't got to put the ball on the floor go straight up just small things like that and you know some of the big things somebody that's got my back no matter what and it's gonna push me every day in practice it's something that i had to adjust to and it was tough um, but, yeah, he, he's been the same guy from day one, you know. So it's good. Um, I'm happy to be back with him, you know. It's always good seeing him. You feel the same way? I know you talked you got about <laughs> seeing, you know, Coach Weber evolve a little bit over the years. Do you feel like you've changed or do you feel like you're, like he said, um, just the same guy? You know, I think it's I'm pretty much the same. Yeah. It's, it hasn't changed <laughs> very much. But I, I tell you a funny story about DJ. It was Xavier. Xavier Sneed was on his visit and they had come to our house. Right. And so – they're, we're talking, and there's people in and out of my house, and those guys know. So DJ just walks in without knocking on the door, goes right and starts playing the piano. And we're still talking. We're not even saying anything. And right. his dad goes, did y'all just see him coming <laughs> and just get on the piano? And nobody's saying anything. And he's just playing, and Jazz runs over there. And they're just yeah. doing it. And then he goes, man, we're coming here. I mean, this is family stuff right there. That locked and, it in right that, there. That was, that was a big part of it because DJ just walks in, gets on the piano, starts playing, and. You know, that's kind of how my house is with those guys. Right. They come over, and my wife feeds them and takes care of them, and they know, uh, they always know that that's, that place is, you know, their home away from home. Yeah, I'm glad Coach Larry mentioned it, you know, with you being from St. Louis. Obviously, you know, Xavier from St. Louis, you, you know, Levi, and then other guys, you know, kind of come in the program. Um, do you take any pride in that St. Louis pipeline and being a part of the K-State program as it, as it really is now? 
Yeah, for sure. I mean, Nino uh, yeah, Williams yeah. from St. Louis. So, and uh, Coach Lara is the first coach to recruit me. You know, yeah. I, I started hooping uh, freshman in high school, and uh, end up seeing him. I don't know if it was on the AAU circuit first. Uh, but then following that, I seen him in the in like December at like a showcase that we did. He was there recruiting yeah. me. So um, it's just, it's been a long time. Like I've known him for a long time. And when he got the job here, I was just like, well, like I know this guy. He's been <laughs> he's been wanting me since you know. And I, I was raw in high school, right. just you know, only could run the floor and stuff. And he was interested in me. So um, yeah, I take definitely take pride in it. And then trying to get X here and then leave out here. So it's just like. It's, uh, I always tell them, you know, it's, it's good to get away from home, but you're not too far away from home. Right. Uh, my parents come up often. They came up often. Ex-parents don't miss a game. So it's just it's, – this is a perfect setting for it. So, And then to kind of wrap it up, I'm, I'm still a little more curious about how your career works now. I was talking I think, with Thomas Gibson the other day about it. And I'm just kind of fascinated to hear how do you find out about, you know, these different teams that are available to play on? Do you have an agent who helps you with this? I'm just curious what the process is of finding these opportunities – to keep playing basketball yeah sometimes you know it's it's different sometimes a team will reach out to you um a, a, maybe a different agent from uh that's not yours to reach out for you right um wh- whenever that ca- whenever that is the case you know i hand over that information tell them to contact my agent he take care of everything so right. um anything from uh teams in europe to maybe a workout here in uh in the states he takes care of everything for the yeah. most part well dj i appreciate it coach i want to give you a chance there anything else you want to share about you know about DJ or about what's going on this summer before oh, D- we DJ went. You know he was obviously on the team. You know he played every game as a freshman yep. for a conference championship team, and then obviously we got it back. And the second year people thought we weren't going to be as good, and there was times we played him and Gip together, and it would like annoy <laughs> the other team because they just get offensive rebounds. Right. They would shoot it, he shoot it, Gip would get it, Gip would shoot over, he would get it. That's so we nice. we kind of experimented with a little thump and bump when they were younger, yeah. and mm-hmm. and and it hurt when he got. When, when, when DJ couldn't play, had the red shirt, um, because it didn't help Thomas, and Thomas right. needed him, you know, in his senior year. And, um, you know, he got so much better. He improved year to year. And, and as a senior, I mean, by the end of his junior, he was dominant. You know, he had to get double teamed. If you yep. didn't, he would, you know, he would kick your butt. And then as a senior, to see him grow and evolve into one of the better post players in our league, um, and to see him establish his own legacy here with, with how you see people run up to him and call his name. And we were just, as soon as we went upstairs, somebody said, there's DJ. I mean, yep. every time you're with him, you're going to hear that. Just because he, he was always around town. He, he, he enjoyed Manhattan, and he lived his, his college life to the fullest. So, you know, I'm proud of him for, for, for that side of it. And growing up where he grew up at, to, have, to being able to be a great student athlete, like he isn't going to have three degrees by the time it's over. I feel like you didn't um, need to call his didn't need to call his family about his grades or anything. No, that was just gift. <laughs> just D- gift. He, yeah. he was pretty motivated. DJ yeah. was easy, and his mom <laughs> his mom was around anyway, so she was yeah. she was always around too. So, mm-hmm. well, thank you, coach, and thank you, DJ man. We really appreciate the time. Yeah, no problem. Thanks right. for having me, man. Thank you.